Welcome to the party. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Adventures with the Trendsetter. Here is your master of ceremonies for the evening, Brian Verga. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with another episode of Adventures with the Trendsetter. I'm your master of ceremonies, Brian Verga. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. And I have a special guest. So nice. Had to have her on twice. Because why couldn't you have her on twice? She is a true Jersey girl at heart. She is none other than Lauren Phillips. And if you guys want to catch who Lauren Phillips is, why wouldn't you know who she is? You guys can catch her on Twitter at Lauren Fills Up. Also, IG Lauren Fills Up. Her website, laurenphillips.com. You guys can also catch her on Tumblr and her own blog, Lauren Fills Up. Lauren, thank you so much for coming back on. First thing I need to ask is, how are you doing? Have you recovered from the enormous jet lag you must be dealing with right now? Um, <laughs> well... I'm doing pretty good. I, I am actually like today. I'm trying to like recoup because uh, I've been traveling so much. I just got back from doing a cruise uh, from Vancouver to Los Angeles on top of uh, being at night moves in Tampa. And then I also was in Prague, hmm. uh, Czech Republic for legal porno. <laughs> And I also mentioned you went to Jamaica as well. You were doing stuff for Paradise Challenge as well, right? Yes. I, yep. I went to Jamaica for about, uh, I think that was a week as well. So it's been a lot. And I'm trying to rest up for today because after this week, I head to San Jose, California for TwitchCon. Mm-hmm. And then once I get back from that, I head to New Jersey for Exotica. I know, and the weather's changing here, uh, Lauren. It's it's getting down to that fall weather. The days where it's 70 or 80 degrees are done. It's like in its 50s right now. The nights are getting shorter too, so when you come here, I don't think we'll have any issues like I did last time where it's going to be unseasonally warm. I think it's going to be classic fall weather here in the uh, the tri-state area. Uh, um, last year when I went there, yeah, it was, it was really nice. It was really warm, and I was surprised. Mm-hmm. But a few weeks, usually, I feel like, when it comes to uh, season change and stuff like that, each year kind of balances itself out. So if last year was really warm, I'm assuming that it's going to be on the cooler side. So I'll probably be all bundled up, and then once I get Exotica, the layers come off. Yes, the layers <laughs> come off as everybody is looking forward to. I'm looking forward to meeting you actually for the first time down there too. Uh, is that something with your traveling? I was kind of interested because I know when I travel, I have to be very careful because if I'm going from a cold climate to a warm climate, not so bad. But if you're going from a warm to a cold climate, that's where I have the tendency, not to mention that you know there are a lot of germs on an airplane, but uh, I get the tendency of getting sick. Does that happen to you or are you, you know, you're, pretty, you're pretty good with that? Um, I'm usually pretty good. I travel um, with, it's funny because everyone's usually surprised when I say this, but uh, every time I go to a location, mm-hmm. um, I grab apple cider vinegar or I travel with it. And I take uh, just a spoonful every day and it builds up my immune system. So I am like uh, the guru of apple cider vinegar. I just love it. I, I use it for everything. And I usually travel with that. The only thing that usually happens when I travel, though, is usually when I'm going from warmer to colder, mm-hmm. is that my skin will get a little dry and I have to like moisturize more. But apple cider vinegar is like amazing. Okay, I'm writing this down now. So, what you take like a, t- a t- tablespoon of this? I do a tablespoon okay. um, because I'm used to the taste now because I've done it for so long. Yeah. But I did. I put it to the test. Um, beginning of this year at AVN. So usually AVN, the convention is like, uh, what, Thursday to like Sunday or something like that. It's like four four days and it's like the lack of sleep. Uh, A lot of the uh, porn stars are like going to the convention for like eight hours and then you go get some food and then you have to go to the after parties and stuff like that. So you're like literally running on E and there's so many people there that usually you end up getting, we call it the avian flu. <laughs> and um, so what I did is I would just do a tablespoon in the morning, and then at night I would get tea, and I would put a teaspoon in for, like, green tea. And I just kept doing that, and it worked like a charm. So if you like the taste of it, tablespoon. If you don't like the taste of it, you can 
just get nice strong tea, like green tea or something. Just put a teaspoon or two in, and at least you're getting it in your system. It's amazing. <laughs> No, I am definitely taking your advice. Uh, I need all the help I can get. I think as I've dealt with the lack of sleep for myself, that I've become more prone to getting sick. Now, it didn't usually happen for me, but now it's it's kind of happened. So what's going to happen, obviously, Exotica and then, you know, making the trip and obviously the fall weather, you deal with like the winter and the cold and the flu. And, and funny, you mentioned the avian flu. I didn't believe in that too. People were talking about it when I was there last year or, or back in January, and I actually got it. It was amazing. It was only for a couple of days though. <laughs> And I was like, what the hell is going on? But it was a, it was a weird effect because I, I only started feeling it like three days after I had gotten back and I was already mm-hmm. back in New Jersey. Did I start feeling that? I was like, what is this? And I, me- I remember hearing people talk about it. And I was like, oh, my God, I, I got it. This is crazy. But I definitely want to take that into consideration because I want to keep my immune system strong and healthy. I mean, it sucks when you're sick, and especially with a busy schedule like you. Quickly, talk to me a little bit about, you know, what was your favorite part? I mean, were, were your, did you enjoy going to Jamaica more, Prague, or the each one have its own little – different uh, enjoyment out of it. I mean, I know you uh, had mentioned, I think, on your timeline on uh, Twitter that the Vancouver one was more of just Mm -hmm. a mini vacation for you. So let's talk about that one real quick first. Did you have a great time? Were you able to relax a little bit and recharge those batteries? Um, Yes, I definitely, it was um, relaxing, but I also did a little bit of work there. Oh, I know, I know. (laughs) I did like, Mm. (laughs) I shot some stuff there as well. Cause you say I, that with your mischievous it, voice right there, I hear. Like, oh, but I did a little work too and that little laugh. Yes, of course. We all know that. But besides the work, because you can always bring your work with you, um, you know, sometimes I always feel it's important, especially when people are um, definitely hustling and you're a hustler, to kind of take those few moments to yourself and, you know, allow yourself to kind of decompress because it can be very over. Not I use the word a lot overwhelming, but, you know, sometimes you can get lost in the work. Um, I, I don't, sometimes I, I do get lost into it, but I think I'm so used to it now and it's like, cause I'm a workaholic. That's just, that's just who I am. Mm-hmm. And like, um, I had a great time in Vancouver doing the cruise. Um, I did one last year for my birthday, which was, uh, from Fort Lauderdale to, um, Jamaica and then back. And, um, so it was fun. It's just, um, I'm glad to be home. <laughs> and sometimes, like, when you travel so much, and and, and that's what I'm kind of, like, getting to the point at, is that when you travel so much, sometimes traveling isn't, relax, isn't relaxing anymore because you've traveled so much. So it's like, I'm, by the time I was done the cruise, which I had a great time, drank lots of wine, and enjoyed so much stuff, I got... Uh, went to Vancouver, um, had some of like, uh, it was a short time in Vancouver. So, because mm. my flight was delayed <laughs> for six oh, hours. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so once I got to Vancouver, me and my, uh, friends that I went with, we were going to try to do one, the, they have like, they're known for ramen noodles. Uh, but we were all like super like grouchy from like, being at an airport for several hours that we just grabbed sushi and called it a day. I kind of find it hard uh, to imagine you ever grouchy, Lauren. You always seem to be very perky. And even if you're tired, you're always laughing and having a good time. What's Lauren Phillips like grouchy? Um, uh, it's hard to explain. I, I can snap. I'm snap and sarcastic sometimes. Like I, I consider it a typical Jersey girl. Like I can, <laughs> I can snap every once in a while, yeah. and then if I'm really grouchy, I can be very sarcastic. But um, I usually either I have a lack of sleep, or um, yeah, most of the time it's just a lack of sleep or stress. I should say, like stress can get to me sometimes. Okay. But like I don't get like uh, what do they call it, hangry or something. Like when you get really angry and mad because you're hungry, I don't really get that. Okay. Um, this is I've good to know it. for me. Yeah, I, I need to know this. You know why? Because when I do see you in, in, the, in November at Exotica, I want to make sure I know some of the signs because I don't want to catch you in a grouchy mood. Sarcasm I can deal with because I'm very sarcastic myself, but I don't want to catch a snappy Lauren Phillips. I want to see a happy, um, uh, very fun-loving Lauren. Because I know not I only that, you're going to be <laughs> traveling to Jersey early a day before Exotica to do that Team uh, BJ thing. 
Oh, we're actually, unfortunately, uh, Team DJ got canceled. Really? I actually have to, yes, and it, um, it's funny because I've been trying to announce it, uh, oh. but I've been traveling so much that I haven't, so my goal for tomorrow is actually I'm going to do a video and post on Twitter and explain why, but Team DJ has been canceled because of the SEPTA and FOSTA bill that they passed. Um, we've been trying, we figured out a location and then my webmaster went to Budapest for, uh, they had, um, they have, it's like an expos awards, but it's in Budapest. It's okay. for European awards. And they had like little, uh, seminars as well. And one of the things with the SEPTA and FOSA bill is that, um, you can't do a fuck a fan anymore. Like you can't. Um, so uh, they were. Why my not? webmaster was a little nervous. What was the reason behind? Uh, why can't you do it? Because it's it's considered human trafficking. Oh, okay. So if someone is paying to be a part of something, uh, and it's sexual, right now because the bill is so um, broad, so there's not a lot of detail in it. That's under that category. So like I was talking to my webmaster and uh, he was asking me about it and I was like I'm not a lawyer so I don't know anything about it and I was, mm -hmm. he, what we were worried about is if we're making money off this which technically surprisingly that you guys might be surprised that I do not make money off Team DJ I, the last Team DJ I did I did, I did not make, <laughs> I did not make my investment back it was literally for the fans I so everyone that thinks like we make tons of money off this is so not true. <laughs> no, but it would be um, fair to assume you make some money off of it because I mean it'd, it'd be do. going it'd be going on your website and be going on Angelina Castro's website as well. So maybe not yeah. as much as your so, investment, but yeah, you'd make something out of it at least. So like the people that join my site, yes, and then the people that buy the DVD, mm -hmm. yes. And the money that we made, the most of the money I made off for our last one was also the teacher dancing I did as well. Um, so uh, I, did, I was telling my webmaster, I was like, well, technically we're not making money off the actual Team BJ itself. It's the things to be a part of it. And they, um, after talking to a lawyer, um, they said it would go under that bill and that we could get it. It's not like, oh, a slap on the wrist. You can actually get arrested. For wow. It. And so anyone that you see right now that's doing a fuck a fan contest, it, they're actually breaking the law. Like they, you could get in serious and it's not like the, it wouldn't be, it would be all of us because we're all breaking the law. Yeah. Well, not just um, that. They're probably, it's probably made up too. Like it's not really a, a legit contest maybe under this law because they probably promote yeah. it, but they don't have to necessarily, you know, quote unquote, pick a winner. It could be anybody. It could be somebody that, you know, it's not necessarily you know, this type of scenario. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. I had no idea. It's, yeah, it's uh, oblivious. Cause I was, I didn't even think about it. And I, I personally am like, I'm like, well, we're shooting, so we're making, we're making porn out of it. So I was thinking it's a film thing. But yeah. for some reason right now, there's, because it is, it, there's not enough detail in this bill. It's crazy. To strictly go towards human trafficking. And this is one of the ways it's affecting porn right now. So like, even if, someone i know uh, several people right now um that i'm actually gonna like forewarn them so they know um that's doing a fuck a fan contest um even though you're taping it it's still you're making money off bas basically fucking somebody so right now that bill is saying that is against the law it's ridiculous Wow, that's crazy. I'm sure there are a lot of disappointed people. Uh, you know, this is fascinating for the mere fact that under this now it's canceled. So there are no likes of it being rescheduled until you find out further details of what's going on, right? Yeah, it was like I, I actually read the bill, and <laughs> you can uh, re if you go in and read that bill as just a, a U.S. citizen. Yeah, it is so confusing to read it. And most and bills are. You have to literally, like, I was, like, trying to figure out, like, what part of this bill would be like that. And um, it just sucks because it kind of, you know, it's now taking away uh, more of our freedom. 
it's not helping human trafficking at all. Like I not saying that at all. I shouldn't say at all. It's it's helping a small part of it, but I don't think that bill is targeting what what it really needs to target. No, yeah, no, I get you. Wow, so that that's definitely something new. You'll be making a video about that, that pretty soon and be posting. Obviously, you've been pre preoccupied, so that's why you didn't have a chance to. But uh, are you a little disappointed too? Because um, you know, from the sound in your voice when we spoke the last time, it looks like you were looking forward to it. It looks, you know, fr- from from talking to you, it really looks like you really want to give back to your fans that way. So you're disappointed that a lot of people are gonna be disappointed that you know this is gonna happen. Yes, it was. Um, it was actually like this was. I was super devastated. Because um, I had, tr- I did, I, I do all the research. Like I, I knew, uh, I knew nothing about soccer, football. I knew something about. Like I could definitely, <laughs> like I did my research and I knew like my players. I'm a huge Eagles fan, and so I knew, like I knew football, but I, I didn't know soccer at all. So I, I decided to do a ton of research on like different teams <laughs> and how the game is played. So I put like, we put a lot of effort into this yeah. and I had like everything scheduled out what game and trying to see them and watch it and promote it. So, um, it sucks. Cause, um, all, it was like when I, when we won, I was like, all right, this is awesome. We can do another one. I'm super excited. I want to try to do this. I want, we had 37 guys. I was like, we're doing it in Jersey. I probably could get 50 this time. Mm-hmm. This is awesome. I had huge goals. And um, now that's swept under yeah, the rug. Yeah, I was really basically. devastated. Like I still am because I will. I probably will never do. That was my last chance to do a uh, TVJ. Oh, that's a shame. Oh man, this is getting worse mm-hmm. and worse. But uh, who knows? <laughs> You know, things can change. Bills are very complicated to read sometimes, so maybe there is some leeway or whatever down in your future. You never know. Time will tell, obviously, on that one. But uh, that's crazy in, in terms of that. But um, and you're still going to be there, uh, maybe necessary as early, maybe get a chance to enjoy Halloween. Do you, do you, do you get a chance to – well, clearly because you travel a lot, but are you going to be excited a little bit? Are you going to dress up for Halloween now? Does that mean you have to come in early or you're going to actually show up on the, on the second rather than on Thursday? Um, so I, I – um I'm still going to be flying into New Jersey on the 31st. Okay. Um, I've never spent, uh, well, besides that when I was in, not in porn, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, did, but I have, I was in New Jersey for like, you have to consider I've been in New Jersey for almost like five, six years now. Yeah. Usually for, uh, Halloween, I would go to a porn party, um, and do some and dress up and do something there. And I usually dress up something really scary because uh, I believe in all Hallows Eve yeah. and dressing up to something that uh, um, to disguise yourself so that you don't get your it's supposed to be demons will take your soul or whatever you believe in. Mm-hmm. Um, so I always dress up to something scary because I always have to dress up and be pretty and uh, and stuff like and be sexy. So I always dress up something really scary and then usually people can't recognize me <laughs> nice what, what did you do last but year this, uh last year i was um i actually it's funny because i this is probably a no they all are do-it-yourself uh costumes um you know have you ever watched american horror story yeah i used to cover that for work yeah i used to watch it was, it was kind of weird <laughs> but pretty interesting yeah um, the one where they did, uh, the circus and they had that clown. Oh, really? Oh man. My brother would have been freaked out by you then. He hates clowns. Like my brother's so terrified did, of, yeah. I did the female version though. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. That's really nice. See, I noticed you put a lot of work into everything you do. Like you don't do it half ass. You really go all out on it. Yeah. Cause it's fun. <laughs> To to you, to the outsider, yeah. might be like, oh my god, I'm putting a lot of work into this, and you're not even going trick or treating. Yeah, I um, I'm hoping that uh, when I land in New Jersey on ha- Halloween, like, will I go out? I, I would probably go to Philadelphia more than anything, but mm-hmm. uh, I would have to see when I land because where I, where my folks are, um, unfortunately, the area is kind of going downhill. So they put a a time limit that like you only can uh, trick or treat between certain er- hours, and then you're done. Yeah, wow, that's that's that sucks if you're a kid over there. 
I know, right? I used to go trick or treating. I get home and I would get dressed and go trick or treating until like eleven o'clock midnight. I know. If they were still getting candy. <laughs> Me too. I, I stopped last year. I kind of gave it up. I mean, at, at, at 32 years old, it probably looks kind of silly for a guy to be trick-or-treating, but hey, to each of their own, right? Nobody was complaining right? on me. It was, yeah. It was, it was back, in the, back in the day when it was, it, um, I feel like when I was a kid, it was way more fun than it is now unless you uh, are in a, a more smaller town like uh, before the, where I was, uh, before my town went basically downhill, uh, there were, you could get candy everywhere. And then it wasn't just candy. People would actually make their house into a haunted house. Yeah. Like it, everyone got really into it. It's not like that no more. No, it's not. I always say it to myself too. And uh, clearly you share the same sentiment. Things were a lot more nicer when we were kids back then. It was, it was a simpler time to worry about just doing your homework and dressing up and getting ready for Christmas and making sure Santa was ready. And we did our Christmas list and stuff like that. Very simpler time than now. Now everything's uh, a little bit more complicated. Well, I, I think it's, um, I, I think it was, because uh, I'm not coming in as a kid that already has, like, we had a little bit of technology, but not as much as there is now. Like, yeah. um, I feel like it's not just our age. I feel like it's just this generation in, in, gen, in the, the big picture of things, because I was talking to one of my friends, you know, so, uh, in the industry as well. She uh, has a kid um, and has like nieces and nephews. And I was uh, telling her where uh, one of my favorite places I like to go and have like a Christmas experience. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me that uh, that sounded like a great idea. She really wanted to take her family there because kids aren't excited with toys anymore. There's so much into technology like that they're not excited after. I, I was excited about toys and Tar was like probably like, 12, 13 years old. Me too. Me too. I was excited about it. I was excited to get action figures or whatever and things like that. I mean, that's another reason why you know chain stores like Toys R Us no longer exist anymore. Nobody's going to the stores yeah. and buying anything anymore. They're just buying it online. Or I saw, I saw yesterday, I was in the city uh, going back home after a very long shift of work. No joke. It had to be like 9 o'clock at night and there's this kid, could be more than 7 years old, still up at 9 o'clock. Usually by 9 o'clock I'm in bed where my parents had me in bed by 8. Uh, and he's on a mm -hmm. tablet, playing on his tablet. And I'm like, yeah, the, the days where, you know, going outside and staying outside till the very end of uh, lights where you come back in and using your imagination, things like that, that's kind of gone the ways where, yeah, the, the, the society has changed, obviously, and also the mentality has changed a lot. So and nothing, nothing we can do about it. We can just enjoy the, the good old days, Lauren, that we had back then in the days. <laughs> But uh, you're also going to be part of the uh, yeah, the good old days. You know, back in my day, Lauren, gasoline was 99 cents. <laughs> you can fill your gas That's tank with just $10. Cool. Yeah, but in Jersey, yeah, in Jersey, I, it was 99 cents. I do cents. remember my, I, I don't, when I was a kid, I don't remember the gas, but I remember when I had my car, uh, um, I could fill my car up for 20 bucks. I do remember that. <laughs> Yeah, so great, wasn't it? Now it's not 40 or 60 anymore. It's 20 bucks for a full gas tank, and it lasts you longer. It was, it was a mm -hmm. lot simpler time back then. But um, you're also going to be part of the Inked Awards too, right? You're going to the after party. You're going to the award ceremony and the after party on November, I believe it's the 3rd, of that Saturday. Yes, um, I will definitely be at the Ink Awards, and um, I will try to be at the after party. I uh, I have to see how I feel after the awards usually. <laughs> usually if I have like at least like one glass of wine in my system, I'm pretty fine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm super excited. I'm actually like reached out to Ink Awards did this whole tweet thing about taking over their Snapchat. And I was like, ooh, I want to. <laughs> ooh, I can only imagine the things you'll come up with by taking over their Snapchat. Right. <laughs> Can you explain to me something real quick? I, I've been interested in it, and I've seen a lot of people promote their premium Snapchat, and then there's like Fan Centro, and then many vids, and um, OnlyFans, for example. So where do you go about kind of coming up with that decision of, do you look at it more like I'm trying to use all these platforms and kind of spread myself out that way, or do you do research and find out which one's best suitable to what you want to do when it comes to choosing these platforms? I'm, I'm still trying to figure out Snapchat myself, but then there's premium Snapchat, there's a public one. 
you have all these other events where a lot of adult performers are using, you know, their premiums to get fans to join in for like free for 24 hours and then pay a membership fee. How does that work? Where do you come to that decision process of choosing what platform you want to use to have more access to your fans? I think it just depends on the artist. Mm -hmm. um, I Fan Central is now the Model Central Fan Central is now this big happening thing, which I've met with the uh, with them, uh, which was very coincidental. I, I, like, I, um, I met with them in when I was in Jamaica. So I knew that they were coming, but I actually didn't know the full extent of how much I was going to be like, uh, inter uh, interacting with them. But, um, right now they're like the, um, a really good company. I think it just depends on what you are capable of doing and how much time you want to do it. Um, many, many vids, God, many vids has been around over five years. Like I remember being a cam girl and that was a cam girl platform only. You would store your videos there because when you're on cam, people would purchase your videos and you needed to be able to create a link to send it to them. Um, and that was one of their main things. Or if you wanted to have a clip store, that was a thing that wasn't fetish, which is uh, fetish is like clips for sale. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that was, that's been around for a while. Only fans, uh, um, I don't know. I've, I've heard some good and bad things right now. Like um, I, I think it just depends on the person how to choose it. Um, I've done seminars. Um, I did a seminar at Fet uh, FetishCon, uh, and I actually was really intrigued uh, because I I go to seminars and I'm like, if I learn something from it, I'm excited because that's what I go for. And one of the advice was to put to open up a bunch of platforms and to uh, open up uh, and and. Spread your home. spread your seed <laughs> wherever platform. Whoa, whoa! Want. What are we talking about? Here? Um, Jeez. <laughs> uh, like clips. Spread your clips. Like mm -hmm. you know, just if you're gonna make movies, like stuff like that. Um, so, and I was intrigued to hear that that was someone's recommendation because what I was doing because I have a couple platforms is I was making individual clips for each platform and I got, I was getting very overwhelmed because I couldn't do it all. I just couldn't. I was just, and I, I'm still trying to make sure I get everything done as much as I can, but um, it's hard to explain to say like, should I do this platform or should I do that platform? Yeah. Well, um, well what I was, what I was different. They're all different. You're right. You're right. And uh, you're right. It depends on the person. I was just interested more in what, what, what was the process in your mind to choosing that for yourself. I mean, clearly you like it. Uh, the platforms you choose are the ones you choose because you enjoy them. I was just asking what about them do you like the most? Is it just convenient because maybe uh, you can link everything okay. up together type of thing? Well, I like Fan Central because uh, um, I love the team. I love the company. I've, I, when I went to, when I, went to Vancouver, I was having problems logging on. All I had to do was reach out and uh, they helped me try to figure out what was going on with my phone, uh, <laughs> which ended up being my phone. Mm -hmm. um, I've been with many events since the beginning. I've been with Chatterbait before they were a big fucking like platform. Like when they first started, they, they had like this tiny booth at, X, at um, my first time I worked with them at Exotica. Um, that was like, that was, five, six years ago, maybe six years in 2019. Um, and then OnlyFans, I, 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 I haven't really been as committed to that platform as much as possible because they uh, don't have an app. And that's kind of what they are is an app that you can go on your website. And I feel like, and this is my personal opinion, there's people like Model, uh, Model Central has an app. Uh, there's other, mo there's adult platforms that have an app to, for, especially the iPhone. It doesn't have to be in the Apple store anymore. You can create an app and have it. So in my mind, uh, for them to be slacking on that, I don't, a part of me feels like they're not going to last as long as they're hoping. 
Yeah, it's like a bad sign if you don't have an app right now, which is just kind of an app for everything. You're kind of falling behind, basically. Exactly. And uh, what makes me a little nervous about, uh, which I don't do, so I'm, so I'm not really nervous about it, but I know other people do it, is uh, you're not required to submit. Um, here, let me explain it to you first. Model Central and ManyViz, you have to download uh, or upload anyway, a 2257, a model release form before you can even post the video. Really? Uh, OnlyFans is not required to do that. So in my mind, I, I don't see, uh, I, 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 it makes me nervous. Yeah, that that's kind of weird how, you know, wh why that's a requirement for them. But, hmm, interesting. Uh, but again, you're, you're right. There's so many platforms out there and you have to go by what you're comfortable with, what's convenient, what's efficient, more importantly for you to get all the content you want out there. And there's all the content. Like I said, you went to Jamaica, then Prague. You did some great stuff there with uh, Avi Love, who has been on the mm -hmm. show before. She's amazing. She's a sweetheart. You went to Tampa Bay, Florida for the um, – award show there you went on a mini little vacation for yourself to vancouver then you'll be in san jose before you know it and then back here in essay new jersey my goodness lauren god bless you you're a workaholic i admire that about you but um not only are you keeping busy and hustling and improving yourself you just mentioned too before like you went to seminars and you love learning things from seminars when we last spoke you talked about a certain seminar you go to more for yourself i believe it was more for, you know, personal development. You said it was, it was called Landmark. And uh, just talk to mm -hmm. me a little bit about that in terms of, you know, I always find that fascinating because I think a lot of people, at least from my experience, look at, you know, things like that or self-improvement and they, they, they're, very, they're very private about it. And they're very um, concerned because they want other people to think that, oh, they have negativity, which I think is weird because we're all human beings and we all deal with negativity. We all deal with... Um, doubt within ourselves. So have these, have these seminars really helped you a lot? And, and what do you feel you still like to improve? And I'm sure there's a lot of things, but if you can kind of ballpark it to a little bit, what are the things you, <laughs> no, cause it's true. We all have thing. I have a million things I wish I could improve about myself uh, as a, as a human being, but what things do you, do you still want to focus on and improve before this year's over and kind of get a, kind of get a, a big fix on it? Um, well, uh, with landmark, it, yes, it was, I, it did help me uh, personally. Um, I went there trying to figure out, I feel like because my business is a branding thing and it is um, uh, a character, uh, um, what's an alter ego, basically. Mm -hmm. um, for my business to run well, I have to be tuned in to myself as well because like, an alter ego is, uh, is basically a part of me, but in, in my mind, it's an extreme, something that in my uh some most i wouldn't do in my in no, my normal life sometimes i get to be a little bit more extreme like when i am on film i probably the stuff i do on film i'm not going to do it in my personal life if i i have normal sex like everybody else what's that like <laughs> normal sex whoa whoa that's like a normal. foreign concept right there what are you talking about <laughs> and normal sex like not opening up the camera or, um, would you ever catch yourself okay. sometimes doing that? Um, like well, playing, right like playing, a, playing a movie in your head, like, oh, I'm having sex. Oh, I got to open up. Oh, wait a minute. There's no camera there. Well, right now, uh, um, usually when I normal sex, I don't catch myself doing that, okay. but I'm going through a phase right now that I like, I, I like taping my personal life right now. <laughs> nice. That's yeah, for your personal so. collection. Yeah. I don't know. It's it, I go I, I go through phases just like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, but you know, talk about genres, for example. I remember uh, talking to a few people about this in terms of genres and you know what's popular, what's not. There's so many out there. We discussed this last time too. But I think the amateur thing, to me, I find that personally more gratifying. You know why? Because even though I can't see penetration, or you can't see certain angles because the camera's fixed in one position. That's probably the most authentic you'll ever really get. I know, it's, for example, when you're filming. And this is me being a novice talking about this. Like, I know what I'm talking about here. But uh, I know a lot of it's it's all kind of uh, choreographed in a way. Five minutes doing this, five minutes doing that. We're going to do that, mm -hmm. and then we're going to close. Sometimes, for some people. It depends on the individual, Sometimes. of course. Yes. But uh, for the most part, most 
people would say it's choreographed or it's, it's not the same exact thing as, you know, two individuals just enjoying it. You're not worrying about the camera or people around you or, you know, when you ask switch positions. So I think amateur stuff is really cool because, you know, like you said, you, you film yourself. That's literally amateur right there and stuff like that. And it becomes more authentic, more the, the real you as opposed to the, the alter ego in a sense. I guess so. Yeah. I, I always see, I like, uh, like I've watched amateur stuff. Um, mm-hmm. and it, it like, it, it's, um, it depends, I guess it depends on the amateurness of it. Like I like pro amateur, I think is the, the highest, the lowest I would probably go, but <laughs> I like professional because I, I feel like amateur sometimes doesn't make the girl look good. And you want to look good. <laughs> I want I want a girl to feel sexy. That's I like I I um I want to see uh uh I want to when I'm watching porn I want I want the girl to look sexy. I want her to feel good. And sometimes um uh and I I watch porn because of the fantasy, not of how realistic it is. Like because yeah. at the end of the day, you always want what you can't have, and if it looks realistic, then it means I can make it happen. It's very true. Uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, so like, thought process there, yeah. Yeah, so like um when I was when I wasn't in porn, um the whole like uh teacher the professor and student thing yeah. was a fantasy of mine, which it still technically is. Um but I didn't have as much confidence as I as I do now on myself that I never would really think that would happen. Like, I feel like if, uh, now that I'm in porn, I have, I'm older and I have a lot more confidence in myself or I'm comfortable more with myself as well. If I would go back to college, I probably would be able to try, I probably would try to fuck my professor and it probably, maybe I'll give myself like 85% chance it probably would happen. So like that fantasy <laughs> isn't really a fantasy anymore because it can, it's real. It's something real. So I, um, it's, I think it's different uh, on each person and the gender, like, uh, I don't go for reality. Um, I go for fantasy because fantasy is something that you can't ever, you can't ever have. It's a fantasy. Do you find people that have the difficulty of separating those two um, that you've interacted with? And I'm talking about generally when you, when you meet your supporters and your fans or see public conventions, they, they tend to not be able to separate the fantasy from the reality. For people in, in my industry, we it's definitely a, uh, most of the time it's separate. Uh, my fans, though, my supporters, like people that help keep my career going, sometimes they can't tell the difference. Like my first anal scene ever was for Mofos. I still have people this day ask me if I'm still with that with my boyfriend in that film. That guy was not my boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it seems uh, so real. I thought it was, you know, like when you watch a movie too, <laughs> you, you think the characters are so real because the acting was so good. And so you generally, you know, you, they live, uh, I guess, um, vicariously through that. So, yeah, no, it's it's very true. It's, it's something I've noticed too in, term, in terms of um, this industry specifically. I've seen a lot of people unable to separate those two, which leads to those altercations that are not so pleasant. And I shake my head sometimes. I'm like, oh, I just wish they understood that. Yes, they are there to promote themselves, to sell themselves, but they're uh, they're normal, regular human beings, just like uh, the person talking to you. I'm talking to you. You're a normal human being. Despite what you do for work is what you do for work, and that's fine. It's it's nothing different. But to me, to be lost in, oh, my God, I'm talking to Lauren Phillips. I mean, it's great to have that feeling and to be excited mm-hmm. to meet you and see you. But, you know, I understand, too, that this is just a person. What to do is their job. You enjoy it. Great. And, and you go from there. Don't go with these false mm-hmm. narratives in your mind thinking, you know, most people, you know, obviously I'm talking about more males and females. I'm sure females are like this too, are just like, oh my God, uh, I'm in love with her. I'm, no, you're in love with the idea of being with her. You're not really in love with her type of thing. So, Yeah, I, they're in love with the, the fantasy of being able to be with me. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. But I have I've literally like, I was a, I've only had a couple, pe- uh, a, I want to say it's a few, I don't want to say a couple, it's not two, but like I have a few amount where someone had pushed the line and um, at, a, at any convention and usually I just have to say something and um, I have to remind them that it's a, even though they paid to be there, it's still a privilege and you have to, we have to respect each other and that sometimes they need a reminder that if they cross that line the, and they don't listen to that, I, ha- I have to remind them that 
I have more control over the situation than they do. If they cross that line again without my consent, without listening to me, I have no problems going to like night moves. I've had, I've had to have it at night moves where someone wouldn't leave me alone. They, and I had to get security and the person was escorted out. Like it, it um, but it's not usually like that. Like, um, I, you'd be surprised how girls are more handsy than guys because they think they can get away with it. Yeah. Like I was giving this, I was giving this one guy a lap dance and he, I went, uh, well, um, at Exotica and I, my, my rules are you can't touch me. Like I, I place your hands. You can't like, I, I, I'm like, you can't go like buck wild and start groping me. That's unfortunately uh against the rules at exotica in general Mm -hmm. and um he was respecting my boundaries and i'm shaking my butt in his face and this girl's like come on put your face in her butt um be a real man and i pulled he after his dance i was like I was like, you are a real man because a real man respects a woman's boundaries yes Obviously, she doesn't understand that. Oh, you told her. Yeah. Damn right, yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the Lauren that I'm kind of curious to see, but don't want it to be directed towards me. Lauren's like, oh, you are real, man. You shut the, you know, you shut the fuck up. Don't bother him. He's he's fine. But uh, no, nah, no, nah, that's great. No, I completely, I completely agree with that, Lauren. I really do. And um, it's, man, I don't mean to like burst people's bubbles. Like I want people to no. still enjoy porn. Like I, yeah. I still get off on fantasies, but I have like I've had an ex long time ago that was into amateur, uh, amateur stuff, and he he it was uh like housewife gets banged by big black hawk, and that was the theme of it. Mm-hmm. And he truly believed that this girl would go on the streets, pick up. <laughs> Big black guys, and bring them back home and fuck them. And, and it was as amateur as you could get. Like they literally probably had two cameras, no pro lights. Maybe like they use like the room lighting. And he surely believed that that's, that was true. And it's not. I don't think those guys are tested. She's tested. She didn't go out into the streets. And picked up two guys. You know how dangerous that is? Yeah. And I'm like... Illegal, um, too. <laughs> illegal. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and they had model release forms. Uh, they've, had, they've checked everything. They've probably have done, like, behind the scenes. Are you, are, do you understand that you were shooting uh, uh, porn and will be posted up on the internet? They've probably have done interviews about it and stuff like that. And... It was. It looks amateur. Like it looks super amateur. Because yeah. when I think of amateur, I don't think of something as like a whole movie. I I think of the quality of the video. I think uh, bad lighting, uh, probably standard. Not well. HD is now our, our standard, but yeah. let's 4K. say as low form as you can get. Bad angles, <laughs> and um. You know, that's basically what I consider amateur. So when you film yourself, I guess you're very highly critical of yourself too. Like you'll you'll go back like, oh, that wasn't good. I want to I want to redo it again, type of thing. Because you said you want the girl uh, to feel sexy. So like, what in terms makes you feel sexy when you're filming yourself? You said. Um, when it comes to it, depends on what I'm shooting for. Like it depends. Like if I'm just randomly ha- like having sex with somebody and I'm like, hey, can I shoot it? Um, it more means I'm going to post it on Pornhub. And I put all my home movie, home movies, non edit. It's they're not even edited. Like I, I might like uh, up the brightness, like the exposure of it, yeah. and put my lip on my logo. But usually, there's no other editing. So if something gets fucked up, it gets fucked up. Um, but I do like uh, because there's a camera on me. I usually like definitely want to make sure. Like I want. Uh, I want pen. My main thing is I want penetration. Like I, um, I don't want some guy laying on me and my fans just seeing man ass because my fans don't want to see man ass. They want to see something going in my pussy and see my face as it's how how it feels for me. Yeah. They don't want to see some guy like lay on top of me like I'm a a mattress and just dry hump me. <laughs> 
I love the tone in your voice when you're saying it too. It's so it's like I don't want somebody just laying on top of me because you want the quality, of course. I get it. I don't want man ass. That's another T-shirt. Hashtag no to man ass because it's not a porn thing. It's a Lauren thing. <laughs> well, when I watch porn, I like I love. I when it comes to my women, I love girls with big butts. I love that. I, yeah. it's my turn on. But um, like I like I like guys' asses, but I don't want to see complete man ass. Like I want to see if I'm going to watch a a boy and a girl go at it. I want to see both of them. I don't want to just see someone laying on top of each uh, on top of somebody. It's, it's, that does that doesn't turn me on, but it could turn somebody else on. Yeah, of course. Everybody, I think we've established here in our discussion that a lot of things that you and I are discussing and talk about depends on people's particular preferences, and it's true. A lot of stuff, anything yeah. depends on people's personal preference. But uh, you know, talking specifically about you now, okay? And you can't say the <laughs> depends type of thing anymore because I'm not going to let you get away with that, Lauren. In the industry that you're in right now, you said you're comfortable with who you are. You have more confidence within yourself. Obviously, as we've gotten older, we hope we get more confidence within ourselves and more comfortable in our own skin. But uh, within the industry, I don't believe I asked you this in the first interview when I spoke to you, but do you ever feel a sense of pressure? Uh, because body image is one thing. Everybody talks about body image. Everybody's searching for the perfect body. There are ones that are comfortable with who they are and the body that they have. But do you ever feel any added pressure to uh, improve or maintain a certain stature that you have for yourself or is it more that you just, you know, you do this and you maintain yourself in a healthy, healthy lifestyle just because you want to be in a healthy lifestyle? Um, all right. Well, um, first off, I, I started off as a professional dancer. So I've been a dancer based in my entire life. Mm-hmm. Um, you were pro and for five I years. Actually, <laughs> I grew into having a body image problem because of that art. Um, because you're getting nitpicked, you're uh, in le- leotard and tights, looking at yourself in the mirror, uh, having a teacher nitpick at you, and then having yourself nitpick at your like of what you look like. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a huge struggle for me because I'm extremely tall, which is amazing for a ballerina, but I was curvy, which is not. So um, uh, it was that's more leans towards the modernized. Uh, modern dance, which is what I actually lean towards. But I uh, was nitpicked because I was too tall for that art as well. So I actually had this huge body image problem when I was in high school all the way to like my 20s. Um, And it sometimes happens to me every once in a while, I'll I'll, um, feel the pressure because um, I now know what I can do with my body and how fit I can be. So it's not the, um, it's not the pressure of other people usually because everyone says how, how they love my body, which I appreciate everyone being so sweet and, uh, and putting that confidence in me. It's actually um, me putting pressure on myself and I actually don't see it much in my industry. I actually, um, my, I had a recent like, uh, experience this way um when i went to jamaica and in the non-porn industry so like mean we call it mainstream yeah. and um i went there and I, I i felt criticized because i had i have a very specific look i i'm not going that's one thing i want to I, I i don't change who i am for for people so i am I'm a pale, a, a pale ginger that's curvy, and I will not spray tan myself unless I'm getting paid for it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I love how uh, you added that one in. Just, Your voice is so can has so much conviction. Like I will not spray tan <laughs> myself in a very low voice, just like you see those infomercials. Let's get paid for it. Uh, so, <laughs> so, 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 yeah. Um. But I went, like, when I went to Jamaica and I um, went to the Paradise Challenge, that was one of the things that um, I, I'm trying to stay positive because I actually connected with Dan Central, which is my industry anyway. Mm-hmm. But the mainstream was not as welcoming as I was hoping. Like, I had the person that was running this put uh, create, uh, paint this, this, this story for me 
and I um, and all the possibilities that could come out of it. And then it was when I experienced it, it wasn't uh, the beautiful peanut picture that I was, I was, I guess, told. So I went there and I assumed uh, it's a bunch of models and photographers and everyone wants to, wants to work. They want to shoot. They want to do, they want to create photos, do like teaser videos, whatever, that is mainstream only. And when I got there, and I'm, and I'm very bubbly and outgoing, so uh, I'm like, hey, I'm Lauren Phillips. I'm a model. And I'm going, to, oh, you're a photographer. That's super awesome. And um, unless I am just being completely judgmental, which I could be, I'm assuming if a model is introduced himself as a photographer, it means I want to I want to I want to shoot something. <laughs> yeah. But um, that's not but judgmental at all. Hard. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Why would I introduce myself to you if I didn't want to work with you? That's that's how I think of it. But um, I didn't have a lot of people lean towards me to shoot me as, as a model, and a lot of the people that were were very uh, petite, like. Um, not definitely not curvy like me. Like I'm, I'm a petite curvy. I have an hourglass shape. Um, most of them were more like, um, non, uh, what's it? Curvy. I, I guess non curvy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that'd petite. be the best way to describe then, it. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know how to non curvy. Um, and then they were very tan, like very tan, like spray tan, um, if, if you can't get tan type feel and, um, yeah, what it I'm was get- a little sad. Yeah. What, what I'm getting from this though, Lauren, sorry to cut you off there, uh, is that, mm-hmm. you know, people in the quote unquote mainstream have their own type of views, obviously, and, and, uh, feelings mm-hmm. towards what they're looking for. But, um, you know, it, ultimately as, as much as my inner self, basically, Lauren, uh, as you're telling me this, wants to say to all those people that, you know, turned you down, I don't want to work with you, I want to say, you know, fuck you, it's your mistake. Uh, it's their loss, basically. It's it's their loss, and, yeah. and you know why why would you, why would you want to deal with something like that if it's not some if it's not a, a very positive environment? I think you've really dedicated yourself from our last conversation to now of really stepping away from the neg- negativity and really focusing on the positive. So it's best probably that that's not going to happen. And who knows? Down the road, it can change because I think the perception has changed. I mean, um, I can only speak from my perspective as a male. I look at your body mm-hmm. shape and your, and, and that's to me more realistic in terms of, you know, if people talk about Victoria's Secret models and things of that nature, all that stuff's airbrushed. All that stuff is not, you know, we talk about fantasy. That's a fantasy in itself. Nobody is like that written reality and they're very few and far between. I like to think somebody like you who's a ginger, proud ginger, uh, with your body shape and body uh, type is uh, very unique and that's what separates you from the rest. And that's why I feel, my personal opinion, you've been so successful right now in this industry because you are not like nobody else is like you and you need to separate yourself. If you're just like everybody else, blonde, you know, and I know I'm stereotyping here, but blonde, big tits and ass, then you just blend in with the crowd. You want to stick out. Yeah. I agree. Um, I, I definitely, um, that's why I say it. it wasn't, it wasn't a negative experience. It was just a, a learning experience. And I, mm-hmm. I did get something I actually met. Um, it made me appreciate my industry a lot more. Um, and I met some really great girls that are in my industry. Like I met uh, Tunnelly, I met Nikki Delano. Like, I, well, I, I've known her, but I actually got to work with her. We did a content thing for, together. Um, uh, Alina, um, I met, I met some really, uh, I met Lana Rhodes there as well. Like I got to actually meet some people that I, um, it just made me appreciate my industry a little bit more and that it made me evaluate, uh, it, um, how I would like to get into mainstream then because I'm not going to change who I am. This is who I am. And if you don't like it, then, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I, I got a feeling you wanted to say something else, but you being the classy person that you are, say, leaving it as uh, it is what it is type of scenario. But uh, no, I get it. And uh, you said you appreciated that experience. Well, there's one thing I appreciate very much, Lauren, and that is you. appreciate that you took time out yeah, of your you. uh, day to speak to me, uh, trying to recuperate from your I'm long fine. travels. And uh, yeah, I just appreciate everything about you. And I don't know if people have told you this, but I'll tell you this now. You have such a very calm and soothing voice. Has anybody ever told you that? No. You really do. 
like just talking to you and, oh, and, you. and, and this, yeah, this isn't trying to be offensive here. I'm like kind of dozing off because it's so calm and relaxing to me that I'm like, oh man, I want to go see. Oh wait, no, she's talking to me. I need to stay up. Uh, but that's a, that's a compliment in the truest sense because I think your voice is very, um, very soothing and very nice to hear. So mm-hmm. I love listening to you talk. You know, I'm a Capricorn, for example, mm-hmm. and we're all good listeners. So you said you too, you said to yourself, you as a Sagittarius, you're a good listener as well. So we like listening to each other. And I always enjoy talking to you because I feel like we have different opinions on things. And I just always love discussing things with people who are, you know, I like being surrounded by like-minded people, but I also like being, you know, start talking, having conversations with people who have different perspectives on things. I feel like I grow as an individual doing that. And I always appreciate your, you know, your thought process and your, um, your insight on things. So eventually you'll be coming to, uh, next trip will be San Jose, California, and then it'll be Edison, New Jersey for uh, Exotica. Can't wait to see you. You're going to be spending a little bit more time in New Jersey, Joe, though, just to, uh, spend time with family. Last question I want to ask you, and of all the holidays, and kind of guess the Halloween might be the one because I look at your timeline, it says Hocus Pocus will make me feel better. Horror movies always do. Uh, besides Halloween, what's another, do you like Christmas? Do you like the New Year's holiday? Or is it more just Halloween is the focus that gets it, gets in the mood? Because everybody talks about now this time of year, the holiday season, everybody's getting excited for it. Is that is Halloween your main focus? Is that your number one? Uh, well, I love Halloween, but uh, the horror movies thing is just a, a thing for me. Like, I love horror movies. Gotcha. Like, I just love them. Like, I go to Monster Palooza almost every year. I've met the Candyman. I've met, like, all the, like... Oh, don't say his name um, too many I times. Haven't, yeah. <laughs> I haven't met Hellblazer yet. But um, I've met, like, some really, like, horror movies is, like, a thing. It's not just Halloween. But I, I don't know. I like Halloween. Um, Are you going to see the Halloween movie I, that's coming out around theaters? Yes, I am actually, and I was. I'm actually trying to plan out to do like a uh, little like um, <laughs> binge watching because I want to see the old ones. I want to rewatch the old ones again to see. Like I, I won't go all the way in it, but like I might watch Halloween, Halloween two, and then I don't think I've ever seen Halloween three because after Halloween two. Most of them kind of go on the incline at one point. Believe but, me, you're not missing anything with Halloween 3. I'm just letting you know that now. Watch it if you want to, but mm-hmm. it was nothing to brag about. Usually th- usually the third movies and installment of a series aren't very good, and this one wasn't. Yeah, I, did, um, I was just going to kind of like recap and make pro- definitely watch the first one. Um, I'm excited to see about, because I saw The Nun, and I... I I have mixed emotions of it right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I've watched literally all of James Wan's uh, James Wan movie or when he either directs it or produces it. And with going from The Conjuring to Anna, Annabelle um, and then having the nun thing, which I don't know. I don't remember if I had, if he had anything, par- uh, any part to do with it. Um, and I have mixed emotions about it, but <laughs> uh, I just love horror movies. I love Halloween because I like to dress up, and I'm a little disappointed that I don't get to dress up this year. So, uh, like tomorrow, I'm going to do a bunch of Halloween clips um, and nice. try to like, you know, do something. Yeah, get in the but, mood, get in the spirit, basically. Yeah, but I usually like I like Christmas. Um. Do you, I like do you wear the ugly years. sweaters? Hmm? Do you wear those ugly sweaters that's become kind of a tradition now with people for Christmas? They want to wear ugly sweaters for Christmas? Do you um, do that? No, I don't, but I did an ugly sweater Christmas video last year. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I made it into a crop top. I cut it. So that you <laughs> that's you another thing I want to say feet. too. I really like your style too. You have a very unique style about you, and you can kind of tell that. Like I said, it's another thing that separates you from the rest. Uh, and clearly, your style is something that your fans admire and like a lot. But yeah, I'm a Christmas guy as well. My birthday is close to Christmas, so uh, I have no choice in the in the situation because uh, it's always been around. But um, <laughs> yeah, my she, favorite holiday is my birthday. <laughs> I was about to say that's probably be my favorite day is your birthday, where I get a chance to wish you a happy birthday because uh, not a lot of people enjoy getting older. But at the same time, it's all gonna be about you. It's all focused on you. Well, I it's funny because I was just talking to one of my friends about this because we were uh, I'm going for my birthday. I'm going I'm going to Tampa for a week. I'm going to shoot fetish stuff, 
and I'm meeting my folks. My folks are actually going to meet me in Tampa because nice. they want to move there. So I'm going to help them like find a place, all that jazz. So No, they um, can't move there. You know friend, why? Because there'll be no reason for you to stay in New Jersey or come visit New Jersey ever again. So they can't move. You, yep. can't, you can't do this, Lauren. <laughs> you, got, you got to tell them, please, as the trendsetters asking them, please do not move because otherwise Lauren will have no choice and no reason to come back to New Jersey. But again. <laughs> I'll be exotic, huh? <laughs> yeah, you never know. Yeah, you stay longer. The, the thing is, if Jersey can hold on to you longer, that's all I want. But you're right. You said they're they're planning on moving to Tampa. You said. Mm-hmm. So, um, but my one friend was like, "Oh, why are you going to Florida for your birthday? Why don't you stay here and like celebrate with us or like and all that does?" And I was like, "Because it's cold." Um, oh yeah, first thing, it, yeah, it is cold. It gets a little bit colder here around that time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to celebrate with my folks uh, this year just because um, for me, when it comes to birthdays, anyone's birthdays, um, it's not about getting older, but uh, for a birthday, I feel like it is a time to celebrate when a person has entered into the world and has uh, changes, has changed everyone's experience in life because like without that day of me, my, when I was born, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And I wouldn't have uh, helped other people, even filming. Um, I, I have several people that say, Oh my God, like my, my wife loves your movies. Like something I've, I've influenced so many people. And um, if it wasn't for my mom doing that and <laughs> cause I was, not an easy kid. Uh, <laughs> um, and that day, it would have never happened. And people would be different. Everyone would be different. Everything would be different Different if it wasn't. If, you know. So I think of it as a, as a day when uh, something special happens and you change everyone's uh, experiences and influences and it's all like a ripple type thing. It's very it. true. It's very sentimental, too, and I really like that, too. Uh, it is a celebration, Lauren, because that day you were brought into this world, and if you weren't brought into this world, I'd be talking to myself right now. I wouldn't be talking to anybody. And, and, you know, I, I really enjoy our conversations. And again, yeah, birthday should be all that that you just said. For me, I, I, I share your opinion, and also it should be uh, just a, a feeling of appreciation. I think a lot of times people are so worried and amped up of what they don't have, they don't appreciate what they have right in front of them, so... I agree. I completely agree with that statement. <laughs> so, you know, I appreciate you. I'm thankful for you not only being born, but also being here on the Adventure with the Trend Center. So I greatly appreciate it. Guys, she is Lauren Phillips. If you guys want to follow her mm-hmm. in all, and I mean all her social media platforms, you guys can follow her on Twitter, Instagram. You guys also check out her blog. It's Lauren Phils, F-I-L-L-S, up. You can also check out her website, laurenphillips.com. You can check it on Tumblr as well. Uh, Lauren, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. I will catch you at Exotica. Um, enjoy Halloween. Enjoy everything else you're doing. For God's sakes, Lauren, at least for me, do me a favor. Get some rest because I want a perky, happy Lauren Phillips when I see you in New Jersey uh, for Exotica, which will be November 2nd to the 4th, guys, so don't miss out on it. And uh, I'm looking forward just to talking to you for a little bit and, and kind of shooting the breeze because, like I said, the thing I enjoy most about you is obviously your work ethic, your hustle, but at the same time, you seem somebody who's very down to earth, and there are very few people like that as well. And uh, although I have not I have not seen much of your work, I do enjoy talking to you, enjoy your conversational skills, and uh, the, art, the art of the conversation has kind of died to an extent, so I always appreciate talking to you and having you on the show. So I'll catch you at Exotica. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I always... Love having uh, nice discussions and learning something new and expanding uh, my mind and everyone else's. Well, there you have it, folks. Another successful episode of Adventures with the Trendsetter in the books. I am your master of ceremonies, Brian Briga. Thanking you guys so much for listening to this episode. If you want to keep up with my shenanigans and what I'm doing, you can catch me on Twitter at Brian Briga, as well as what I'm doing here with my tag team partner every Friday on the High Spot Podcast. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all one word, High Spot Podcast. We post episodes every Friday. Make sure you check out our website as well, highspotpodcast.com. Also, check out the website, brand new, adventureswithtrendsetter.com, as I cover all of the adult film world for you guys. So, guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. I'll catch you guys next time. And remember, although I must bid you adieu and good fortune, remember, I do this for one reason and one reason only. I do this for you, the crew. We'll be right back. 